Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw finally here to do a Sexy Saturdays video for you guys. This month we are talking about the Sexy in 17 February pick, A Gentleman in the Streets by Alicia Ray. This book is about Akira Mori and Jacob Campbell and their very fraught romantic history. Akira is going through some family developments. Her mother has recently passed away. Her and her mother had a very fraught relationship. Because of that, Akira has rebelled and essentially owns a chain of bars and nightclubs. She has made her entire public persona on being this very risque, very brash, very sexually and socially open and available person. Jacob Campbell was at one point in time for one year, 14 years ago, her stepbrother. Ever since then, their lives have been intertwined in this kind of very tangential way but still involved with one another and so as the story picks up Akira has gone to Jacob to ask if he has a possession of her grandmother's that her mother was supposed to have given to her and she's looking for it he can't find it until he does the the circumstances surrounding him finding this kind of lost item um, are important into the ways their relationship develop, but that leads them into being able to develop to develop a further relationship, which brings them into issues of Jacob's mentality towards women. That's something we're going to talk about here. It also leads to Akira dealing with the issues that she has with her deceased mother and her father, who is still alive, but who is this asshole former hotel owner who is now on like a reality TV show with his young wife and all of her bratty kids. And like, there's lots of things that this book does going on. I want to say from the outset, loved this book a thousand times more than A Promise of Fire. This book just from the get go was so hot and was so like boom 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 action packed in terms of the way that the plot and the relationship developed and moved along anytime a character said no or pulled back or had hesitations the motivations felt real and felt dire and i could like there was an a relatability there that i did not feel from promise of fire but to stop relating it to that book and to hold it on its own merits one of the things that I loved the most about this book was just about how great it is smacking down all that shit that has to do with slut shaming and all of this rape culture and the way that we cast women into types and all of that kind of shit rolled all in together. This book just does not have it, does like gets rid of it. Jacob at one point punishes his younger sister for referring to Akira as a slut. It is made very clear that Jacob has raised a household of his younger siblings who don't use that word or who know not to use that word. But at the same time, Jacob realizes that he, as much as he says, like, don't slut shame, has been super uncomfortable with Akira because she's so open with her sexuality and she lives her, her life in a way that is so open to so many people. So, like, even though he's like, no, she's not a slut, don't call her that, he's acting in a way towards her that he is shaming her for her sexual decisions with her his actions. And so it draws this really great lesson out about how we can not call women sluts and bitches all we want, but if we still treat sexually open women with shame and hostility we're still slut shaming like even if we don't actually call them sluts so that's I just as you can tell was really really something I loved about this book that was really powerful I also really loved how hot this book was this book scratched several of my itches including things like voyeurism mild like pain kink like oh, I just uh, there's so many good parts of this book there is a scene that takes place in a storage closet with two men and a woman and I just that scene was like fire even when their characters aren't touching there's a lot of really great playful sexy flirting banter that happens which was always something I love to read when it's well done because it can often go cheesy and not come off super great but Alicia Ray nailed it I really really loved it so the last thing that I really loved about this book was just how diverse it is. Not only is there racial diversity and an interracial love story happening at like the heart of the book, the book also does a really good job coding for body type and Akira is described as being really tall and having really muscular legs and being really curvy and so she's not necessarily this typical small petite thin framed 
woman that we would think of for the typical like proto heroine of a romance novel. She's not described like that. She is so willing to embrace the fact that she is wealthy. There's a lot of really interesting stuff here about economics and the workplace and how women can function in that. We don't get a lot of women billionaires and there are several situations in the book where for business, Akira has to shift the way that she interacts and the way that she portrays herself. One of the best scenes in this book is a confrontation related to business between her and her father that takes place at the end of the book. That also serves as kind of like the wake up moment for her to understand how Jacob is functioning as such a wonderful like source of confidence and inspiration and challenge in her life. And I just really, really love this book. I really love this book. That's all I have to say. Please let me know what you guys thought down below. Check out the Goodreads group and participate in the discussion. I'm not quite sure what the March read is going to be yet. I will let you guys know as soon as I've decided. I'll put out a Twitter blast and of course it'll be in the Goodreads group. I'll probably also link to it down below. Has not yet been decided but it is coming. Let me know what you guys thought about Gentlemen in the Street. As always you can come find me on social media to talk books. I'm always here for you guys. Please be here for each other. Until next time, have happy reading.